Welcome to videos by Jeff Sibelius and FamilyTravelPhotos.com. So what do I do when I'm stuck in a hotel on Saturday night? <laughs> yep, you guessed it. I make a video for you on how to update your Q500's firmware. This episode is part of a series of videos designed to help you fly your Q500 quadcopter. This episode applies to the unique Q500 Plus, Typhoon G, and Q500 4K quadcopters. Let's get started with episode 11, Firmware Updates. The Q500 firmware update process isn't difficult, but it has a lot of steps. I'm going to lay out this process very clearly here. Follow these steps and you shouldn't have any problems. By the way, notice that I'm doing this indoors. You don't have to be outside or connected to satellites to update your firmware. The first thing to do when updating your firmware is to download the necessary files from Unique's website. Go to Unique.com and select the Support tab. Here you'll find all the products sold by Unique. Beneath each product is a selection of support links. Locate your version of the Q500 and choose the firmware link. You see a page with firmware options for the aircraft, the camera, and the transmitter. Right-click on the aircraft firmware link and save it to a designated folder on your computer. You will see this file has an extension of BIN or BIN. Now, scroll down and right-click on the link for the firmware for your ST10+. Plus. This firmware is for the ST10+. Plus. Do not use this firmware if you have the older ST10 transmitter. Save the firmware to the same folder where you saved the Q500 firmware BIN file. Notice that this file has the name ST10 plus something or other, and it has the extension of zip. Now return to the support page. This time, select the link for GUI beneath your aircraft. Choose the link for your operating system. I'm a Windows user and the GUI has the extension of ZIP. Our next step is to install the Graphical User Interface, or GUI, that allows you to connect with your Q500. Open the folder on your computer where you stored your three downloads. Extract the contents of the GUI ZIP file, which is a single, executable file. Once you extract this file, double-click it to begin the install procedure. When the GUI is installed, Open it to find a list of instructions. The first instruction tells you to click a link for the USB driver files needed for the Q500. Click that link and a web page should open. This all looks horrible, but for the Windows user, simply scroll down and look for the comment available as a setup executable in the comments section for the Windows OS. Right-click and download that file, another zip file, to your computer, or just choose to open it upon download. Once you extract the contents of this setup executable, double-click the executable to install the drivers.
When this is finished, you can delete the GUI zip and install files. You shouldn't have to install it again unless you change computers. Now we're ready to update the firmware for your Q500. To begin, find the communication adapter you received with your Q500. Connect one end of the adapter to a USB port on your computer. You'll find a short extension piece on the opposite end of the cable for your adapter. Remove it. You won't need it for the firmware update. Now, open your Q500 battery bay. Remove the battery if one is installed. In the opening of the battery bay, you should see a cable. I've seen three variations of this. Older Q500s will have the cable stuck to the inside upper right of the bay with Velcro. You need to use the tweezers that came with your Q500, reach in, and pull out the cable so you can work with it. Other Q500s have the cable taped to the front edge of the bay. It will look like a wire loop with a white connector in the middle. Finally, you may just see a single wire taped to the front edge of the battery bay with a white connector on the end. If your setup is one of the first two I described, separate the connector in the middle so now it looks like two wires sticking out. Now, take the wire from your communication adapter and connect it to the wire inside your Q500. If you have big hands as I do, this is a pain in the ass. Your Q500 is now connected to your computer with an umbilical cord that is your communication adapter. Next step is to remove your gimbal guard on your camera. We don't want that on the camera when we start up the aircraft. Now, holding the wire to the lower right corner of the battery bay, slide a battery into the bay. Make sure that it goes all the way in. You don't have to close the battery bay door. Now you can start up the aircraft. Your transmitter is not turned on, so it's a good idea to do this process without propellers installed for the sake of safety. Open your GUI. You should see that your aircraft is connected. You have four buttons along the left side for different options. From the first button, sensor information, you can run diagnostics on your Q500. The third button provides GPS information about your satellite connections. The second button is calibration. You can calibrate your compass and accelerometer here, although I don't know why you would. More importantly, on the calibration screen you can change the height and distance restrictions on your geofence. To change a geofence setting, just type the new number for meters in the box and hit update next to the box. The default for height is 122 meters, and if you're in the U.S., you should leave that setting alone to comply with federal law. The bottom button is device information. You can see the GUI says, I have firmware version 1.07, which is the current version. But let's update it anyway so you can see how this works. Click the firmware update button. On the dialog box that pops up, hit the button key by the text box and specify the path to the bin file that you downloaded. Select the bin file and hit open, then hit update. The process to install firmware takes about a minute. A status bar keeps you posted on its progress. When finished, a message will appear that the firmware update was successful and you should reboot the aircraft. Now you can disconnect the communication adapter from the Q500. After you remove the battery, if you had to separate the cable inside the Q500 to start this process, be sure to reconnect that Q500 cable now. 
as before, this is a pain in the ass. Your Q500's firmware is now up to date. Now let's update the firmware on your ST10 Plus transmitter. Return to the folder where you downloaded all your files and find the zip file for the ST10 Plus. Extract all the files from this zip to a media card. This puts a folder, a zip file, and an instruction page on your media card. Don't do anything else to the contents of the media card. Don't extract that zip file or alter the folder. Open the back of your transmitter and remove the battery. you'll find a small bay for a media card. To open this bay, push up on the door gently and flip it up on its hinge. This door is very fragile, so be careful. Look at the back of the media card and you'll see gold pins. These match up with the gold pins in the media card bay. There's also a notch on the side of the card to help you align the card in the bay. Place the card in the media slot. Close the door slowly. You may have to push it up a little to get it to close. Then pull down on the door to slide and click it into place. Restore the battery and put the lid on the battery compartment. Check the seam where the door meets the transmitter to make sure it's properly latched. Now you can boot up the transmitter. Once the transmitter is booted up, press System Settings and choose About Flight Mode Control. Scroll down. Notice the build number so you can compare it after the update. Hit Radio Control Update. There are two columns. Choose TX file and choose RF file. Select the white file name in the left column and hit Update TX. Soon you should see an update successful message. On this particular firmware update there was no RF update. If there were, you would click the file name under RF file and hit the Update RF button. Click the Finish button to return to the About Flight Mode Control. This time, scroll to the bottom and click System Update. Hit OK to begin the system update. The transmitter goes through the update process. At one point, the Android Droid shows up on screen. My update took about a minute 15 seconds. Then the transmitter reboots itself. Once it's rebooted, hit System Settings. While we're at it, let's fix the date and time. Return to About Flight Mode Control. Scroll down and see the build number has changed. The firmware update is complete. You can leave the card in the slot if you want. If you do, telemetry information about your flights will be recorded on the card. Otherwise, remove the back and the battery, remove the card, and then restore the battery and the battery compartment cover. Once your firmware update is finished, you'll probably need to rebind the transmitter to the aircraft and camera. Not sure how to do that? Binding will be the subject of my next episode. 
This concludes episode 11 of my video series for unique Q500 owners. I've also posted links to other tutorial videos below. Be sure to watch those to learn more about flying your Q500 drone. Please help me by hitting the like button below. That's how you help my channel grow so I can make more videos like this for you. It also helps if you subscribe and you'll be notified when I release more videos in the future. Your comments and ideas for future videos are greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.